So I was on a stream the other day and we were talking about voting and whether or not it is a scam. And I've been thinking about this for a little while now and you know, I pretty much agree with people who say that in a sense that democracy is a scam itself. It's not a very good system. Uh, politicians often go back on their word uh, many times to sell out the people. Uh, but is it really, does it do nothing? Does it do absolutely nothing? Well, that's a different question because I see a lot of people who say, you know, voting is useless, blah, blah, blah. The people who say that are the same people who go and say, ah, you voted for Trudeau, you're an idiot, you you ruined the country by, vo by voting for Trudeau. So it's like, which is it? Because by saying that, you're pretty much acknowledging that voting makes somewhat of a difference, right? If you're saying you voted for him and he destroyed the country, you're saying that his policies had an impact on the direction of the country. And if you would have voted for somebody else, the current events that are happening now wouldn't be happening. You know, you look at uh, Rachel Notley in Alberta, would the country be better off if there was a conservative there? Or, or somebody else like a libertarian type person? Uh, of course it would be. Of course it would be better off right now. You probably wouldn't see as much job loss as you're seeing in Alberta if it was a conservative there as opposed to uh, practically a communist. So yes, the democratic system is fucked up. It's flawed. Politicians care about their self-interest. They're going to lie. They're going to backstab. But if the people want something, if they really want something, the politicians will change their positions not because they really believe in it or anything like that, but because they want to be reelected. So we got to take these people's own greed and we got to take advantage of it and understand that, you know, you look at politics and you look at gay marriage, for example, a lot of people were uh, against it for a long time. The culture slightly changed over time. People started to accept it. And once a, a good amount or the majority of people accepted it, then you started to see politicians shift their position and be like, oh, I, I believe it. I believe it. You know, it's like the politicians, you know, yes, a lot of the times they do propose a lot of the some of the very same things slightly different and then what they do is they just try to divide people through wet wedge issues to win elections it's like their platform could be fairly identical but then they're going to be like well my opponent is a racist and a sexist and he groped a woman uh back in the day so vote for me instead of this guy so that's what that's what they do but that's o the only reason they do that or the only reason their their positions are very similar is because the people in that area have those positions and want that type of government. You know, if you, if you see a, a politician go in an area with a bunch of Muslims and they go and they protest LGBT lessons being taught in their school, you're going to see all those lefty politicians and on the right and whatnot uh, saying, oh, well, that's their religious right, blah, blah, blah. But if they're in an area with a bunch of liberals and stuff and, uh, you know, some, a couple Christians protested, then they would side with all of the liberals in the area. You know, you look at uh, candidates even on the left in areas like Alberta, and <laughs> these leftist candidates would be considered somebody on the right in uh, a leftist writing. You know, like Rachel Notley, who is a fucking communist, would be considered like uh, a, a centrist or somebody on the right in a different writing. So you're going to see politicians mold to this. So voting for people does make a difference because it lets the politicians know what you really want. And the thing is, we don't have a two-party system in Canada. 
we have multiple parties. You don't have to vote for Maxim Bernier. There's that Christian heritage party that if you yourself, like you say, you believe in conservative values and principles, read that platform. I forget the exact name. I'll try to find and put it in the description below. But it's like the Christian Heritage Party. It's very conservative, an actual uh, conservative platform, way more so than the conservatives, even more so probably than uh, Maxims or more or less equivalent to it. So vote for these things because if voting doesn't really matter, it makes no difference, then what's the harm of throwing your vote away to these fringe parties and uh, taking your vote away from the two party system that we essentially have right now between the liberals and conservatives. Because you keep voting for these people, you're going to keep getting the same things. So if voting doesn't matter, vote if you really don't like Max, vote for the, the Christian Heritage Party, because then at least that lets the politicians, the conservatives know, oh, okay, all of this, we're losing all of this support from actual parties that are talking about uh, libertarian type principles. And, you know, this is the only way we're going to get democracy to try to function with us to try to at least work somewhat in our favor, because it is a completely flawed system. It's most likely bound to collapse anyways. But is it is it good to just to, to just do nothing and let the system go and be run overrun by leftists because if you stop voting what you're doing is you're playing right into their hands and you're allowing the left to continue to win elections and if america didn't have the electoral college they would not win a fucking uh, election if there was just the popular vote they wouldn't win and this this is going to increase so the more people on the right kind of step out and don't vote whatsoever, the more power you are going to give to the left. Because all you know, they're, they're not going to pander politicians don't pander to people who don't vote, right? You know what they do? They look at ridings, they look in when after an election happens, they look in an area and they're like, Oh, well, this writing voted a lot, like 90% of people in this area voted, 90% of people here, 90% of people here, oh, 20% here, 10% here. Oh, okay, fuck those people. We don't need to listen to what their issues are whatsoever. They're only going to go to the areas that are voting, and they can see that. They're like, oh, this area voted more, so we're going to go, and we're going to find out what these people want, uh, try to pander to them and then win, right? A lot of politicians also don't have necessarily like a, a plan to replace everybody. Like that's just kind of what's happening. But a lot of them are just, they have self-interest. They want to stay in politics. They want to stay in their comfy government job. So they're going to do whatever it takes to do that. And this is why I liked the Maxim Bernier and all this stuff, because if you don't have these little parties, these fringe parties that people that the the support is going to be funneled away from, from like the main parties, like the conservatives or, uh, you know, for the liberals, the green and the NDP or whatever, then it doesn't really let these main parties know what they're doing is way off the mark. And like I said, again, like, you know, if you really truly believe in these conservative principles, then <laughs> vote for a party that is at least proposing it. Because what what can you lose? Really, if voting doesn't matter, then what can you lose? What's the problem? What's the issue? Like, there, there's no blame, you know, like, if you're not going to get blame if you do vote. Right. Like I said, uh, voting doesn't matter. And the people, you know, like, like this, like I said before, the same people who say that are the ones that blame you for ruining the country because you voted in Justin Trudeau. They're kind of acting like immigration just started in 2015 or something like that. It's like, no, no, no. This has been happening for a really long time. But it's a whole different story. Uh, we, there's no point of going on to lay blame and all this stuff, what we need to do is figure out how to retain our countries, how to, uh, you know, keep things, how to, how to get a smaller government without the use 
of violence and force because maybe that is inevitable maybe that is what we are heading towards regardless and there's literally nothing we can do about it but maybe there is something we can do about it maybe we, we can uh, change the discussion at least maybe we can bring some things into the mainstream to get people to start talking about it you know all this censorship towards social media isn't going on for no reason right it's going on for a reason because people have are having an impact they're having an impact on the discussion and where it's going and people are starting to wake up even though we may not see it people are starting to wake up to immigration to illegal immigrations to the problems with it and that's why we just got we got to keep talking about it and that's not it you know there's more things we need to do but talking about it is something to start because once people truly understand what is going on with immigration what is going on you don't need to really tell them anything else they're going to figure out everything else on their own and they're going to know which party to vote for at which time you know like you all you need to do is at least convince them of that but back to the voting thing does it is it is it pointless yeah in some ways it is but in other ways it's not you know it it's it can have some benefit and there's no point for you somebody who knows a lot about what's going on to just kind of step out of the system entirely and you know if that is the case if that is the case then you know at, at the very least then we need to start teaching people how to be as self-sufficient as possible how to hunt how to fish we should already know that to begin with that's there's, these are always just skills that we should all have you know that when people they went through the great recession or the recession that you know in the 1930s all those people after that happened you know they're all used they all had like uh, uh basements full of reserves of food for the potential of a collapse one day because they knew that if they didn't have this they would be uh, in a bad position they're probably going to starve so after going through that horrible experience they're like okay well, we're never going to be in that situation ever again so we should also be teaching people that for, just in case for the eventual for the worst case scenario you know it's always better to be prepared than not to be prepared but you know democracy like i was saying is a flawed system it's a terrible system it's probably going to implode but I, in the meantime we could potentially have some impact on the dialogue the discussion on the policies and uh, different parties sometimes they seem similar but like I said before they do implement different things you know even if the conservatives were in party right now we wouldn't have the same rates of immigration we wouldn't have a lot of the same uh, things that Trudeau did we wouldn't have a problem with Isis right now because Stephen Harper is the one that made it so dual citizens can't uh, they can have their citizenship from Canada revoked if they went to go fight with Isis then Trudeau came in there changed it back so then now we have to deal with this problem and that's a real problem now people's lot real lives are going to be at risk now like that's a, that's a big deal that's a big deal and voting made that happen voting allowed Isis members to come within your home within your area so it it does have an impact whether you like it or not like I said before, I don't like the democratic system. I don't think it's good. We should have something probably more along the lines of what America had, America had with our republic. You know, make it to only landowners. Maybe not landowners. We can shift it up. People who pay taxes. People who pay into the system. And we can include uh, mothers who don't pay taxes if they're with their husband who does pay taxes. And uh, if they're, you know, paying more than they're receiving, then they should get a vote. But that's a whole different issue. But that's pretty much what I wanted to say. You know, uh, you know, I just want to let people know again that I, yeah, I don't like democracy either. I don't think it's a good system. But completely stepping out of it may not be a good idea. Maybe I'm wrong, and everybody else is right. 
maybe I'm completely wrong, but you know, I think I've made some arguments as to why it may be a good idea to start participating a little bit. And I'm not saying be like a leftist, go into the streets and, and be like them, but uh, v voting can have an impact. But that's all I pretty much had to say. Uh, if you like my content, subscribe and have a good day. See ya.